I'm on my pole. Are you on your pole? Okay. I feel very short. Like I'm at the little kid's table. Yeah, we need chairs. Wait, one second. Jeff, don't move. Never mind. <coughs> <coughs> And welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gaming things. Exactly. We are here today to do another board game snapshot. Pacha! Nailed it. Pacha! Good job. We didn't plan that. We didn't. In our board game snapshots, we do five mini reviews on games, some of which are voted on from our Patreon community. So thank you to our Patreons who have selected three of the games that we are covering today. Cool, you ready? Mm -hmm. This was voted on by our Patreon community and was tied for the most votes. Indeed. That is from Capstone Games, Arc Nova. Arc Nova, I'm have you heard of it? This. Arc Nova is a tableau builder. Zoo builder. Zoo builder. There's a bunch of stuff going on this in this game. Action selection kind of deal. Yeah. Um, with a really cool, unique card mechanic. So basically, you have a bunch of actions in front of you that you can take. And they get more and more powerful as they move up from slots one to five, I believe. Yep. And you can only take certain actions off of those cards if they're in certain more powerful slots. So anytime you take an action, you actually will take that card, do the action, and move it to the back of the order. Back and then. The line everything will move up in terms of power sequence, whatever you want to call it. You are doing conservation efforts. You are building out enclosures for animals, upgrading your parks, upgrading your scientists, this, that, and the other thing right. in order to score more points and combo off of each other. There's so much iconography. There's so much going on in this game. But There's a what, million cards. What I will say is mechanically it's very simple it is a very simple game once you understand what everything is all the iconography and how the game works it's very smooth yeah once you opinion. get rolling you get rolling yeah i would say initially the hurdle's pretty huge big book big rule book i don't want to say it's difficult with how the mechanics work because i think it's, it's very nuanced simple. so there's a lot yeah. of there's exceptions to things and yeah. you know so it's like oh the basic mechanic of this action is quite simple but then you have to look at the card for all of the iconography because maybe this mm -hmm. animal actually can't be placed here maybe it has to be placed between a rock and a lake yeah the game took us probably like three hours to play at that was a, a two player but that's also a learning game mm -hmm. i don't think that it would always take that long to play no. i do think though that that there is, like Jeff said, it's easy once you get going, but we had to have the rule book out the whole time because there's so many little things mm -hmm. that you can very easily forget. And I really liked it. I loved it. I think the best way to play this game is with a, if you have a dedicated game group, slog through the first play all together, learn it so that the next time and the next time after that is very smooth. Where I think this game could get troublesome is if you're constantly introducing it to new players. Yeah. It's going to be a challenge because it is a slog your first play and a lot of people aren't going to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. They're going to be like, this is too long, this is taking too much, it's too much information and they're not going to be interested in it. Yeah, my. Yeah. I honestly would not want to play this game with more than three people. Agreed. I think two is probably ideal in terms mm -hmm. of like length of play. I would not want to get in the business of playing this with more than three people. It's just going to take way too long. And way, anyone way with long. analysis paralysis Oish. would need to be careful. You better get out of the zoo. Because there's a lot going on in this game that yeah. you can do on your turn. Jeff's parents are at the zoo today. They are. There is elements of this game where, or times in this game where you're going to feel like the game is working completely against you. Mm -hmm. It can become a little bit frustrating, but I, I don't think that that's a negative. I think that that is kind of what makes you want to keep coming back to this game because you're always just a little bit too mm -hmm. short to do everything that you want to do. And there are times that where it could become frustrating, but at the same time, I like mm -hmm. I said, I think it's a good thing, but don't become overwhelmed if you're like, ah, I just want to do this thing and I don't have enough freaking money money i know it was always That's like life. i don't have enough money but i have the enclosures i want to yeah. do i could put the enclosure out but i don't have enough money to like do the other thing it's yeah. always like one little variable that's off and you're like ah oh, and you have to wait till your next turn in order to do it exactly overall i would say we definitely would recommend this yeah, um I, I don't know about the comparison to terraforming mars it's been way too long since i've played terraforming yeah, mars yeah i get it i think it's somewhat similar because you have the map in front of you and you're placing out these hexes to build out your zoo I don't think it plays that similarly. It's not a game that gets to the table often for us. I will no. say that. It's a slog even just to set up. Yeah. But 
Once Again. it's set up, really good to play. And a lot of people harp on the art because of all the stock photos, but guess what, Pete? I actually like the stock photos. Animals are cute, and I'd rather see real animals. Well, I shouldn't say that. I would like to see both real animals and I wonder if Cuba Libre kind of mildly set us up for in not minding stock photos. Yeah, at least these are cute animals. <laughs> Next up, we have a game that was sent to us for review from Board and Dice, and that is Mandala Stones. So thank you to Board and Dice for sending this to mm -hmm. us for review. Mandala Stones is an abstract acrylic tile piece placement type of game. I'm just going to explain it because a it's, a, it's an abstract puzzler. Yeah. So essentially, you have a main board in the middle of t the table, and there are stacks of four acrylic circles on each of these spots. Throughout the game, you're going to be moving what they call artists, which are little wooden dowels that have symbols on the top. You're going to move them to open spots, and you're going to take all of the corresponding acrylic tiles that have that matching design on it, and you're going to then be placing them on your own personal board mm -hmm. for scoring later. On your personal board, there are five different areas that you're going to be scoring, and then throughout the game, you are either going to be picking tiles from the main board or scoring tiles that are on your board. Each slot scores differently. The mm -hmm. first person to end the game, or once the game ends, it gets to like two little hands on the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. The game ends, whoever has the most point wins. There's also personal objectives that are thrown into this game that can get you to add points at the end. Mm -hmm. Very abstract. Yeah. Very abstract game. It has a similar kind of timer mechanic to like Patrick, wherein yeah. anytime you score with your tiles, you actually have to take all of those tiles off of your scoreboard and add them to like a timer board, which is going increasing to end game. Mm -hmm. And as that goes up, that'll end the game. So the yeah. more people score, the more tiles that are added to that board, the quicker the game ends. Mm -hmm. It is very good. I really very like this good. game. So if you are into abstract games, if you are into puzzly games, if you like Azul, I yes. think you'll like this. And I'm not just saying that because the comparison of like the, the way the tiles tiles, feel, yeah. but just like the way that it works with your brain. Because mm -hmm. within the game, when you choose to score, you either score all of the same colors, so whatever colors on top of your stacks, or you can just wipe all the top ones in order to start being able to score the below mm -hmm. one. So there's a little bit of like like puzzling and mathing that you need to do mm -hmm. to kind of figure out what scoring your stacks. Yeah, yeah, what the right thing is and timing is involved and you know, sometimes you want to pick tiles but you can't unless you have an open spot on your scoreboard. Mm -hmm. So I really really liked it. It's pretty quick to play yeah. a two player it's, game. It sounds a bit complicated in describing it, but it's it is not. not. It is no. very easy to play. Yeah. Very quick to play. We played it in 20-ish minutes. Yep. And it was very close. Jamie won by, I think, two or three points mm -hmm. at the end of it. Yeah, it has a great rule book, and we great to play outside on yeah, the patio. Yeah, I had a, I, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, um, I'm excited to play it more. Yeah. My only uh, little bugaboo with it, which is just very nitpicky, is the little artist things. I kept knocking things down. That's just you and your <laughs> lack of dexterity. <laughs> <laughs> like just throwing stuff down. Anyways, that is Mandala Stones. Thank you again to Board and Dice for sending that along. All right, next up is another Patreon voted tie for first. Mm -hmm. And that is Brass Birmingham. Birmingham. Leanne, did Leanne, we do it right? did we do it right? Birmingham. 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 Not Birmingham. 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 No. Birmingham. Brass Birmingham. Birmingham. Is a economic... Economic game. Is there anything else that's in it? Economic yeah. Euro game where you are laying out tracks canal paths, train paths to different areas of the city in order to monopolize off of your resources and score victory points. Mm -hmm. It's played over two eras. Essentially, yeah. You have your canal era and then your rail, rail era. era. Yep. And you can do slightly different things in mm -hmm. each era. Mm -hmm. But essentially what you're doing is you're playing through an entire deck of cards. Once that deck of cards is gone, a new era begins. You are building things by using your resources, so coal and iron and beer. It's like an industrial economic game. Very tight, very strategic. I actually love the art in this. I know Jamie doesn't. It's very dark. It's very industrial. It's very grungy. But I mean, if you like that theme, you're going to love this game. We've played it with the iron clays that we have, mm -hmm. which enhances the experience, in my opinion. Yep. Um, after playing this again recently, it reminded me of why I had this game so far up in my top 50 list. 
and I think it's gone back into that position because it's been a while since we've played it. There's so much going on in terms of strategy of what you can do. I love it. It's so good. I cannot say enough good things about it. Leanne just played it and loved it. I harped on this game a lot when we first played it. We played it when we first got into the hobby and I didn't know what was going on it's at true. all. I hated the way that it looked. I didn't like the way that I play. I had zero fun. Now, this time around, we've been in the hobby for a few years now. I learned it myself now. Did we play it wrong for like the first half of the game? Yes, we did. And we, we had restarted, to restart though. it. Whoops. But once we kind of got into it, I was like, I freaking love this game. I don't know why I didn't like it. I love the way that it plays. Like it's, I feel like it's Unlike anything that we it's, have. It's brilliant. It's a brilliantly yeah. designed board game. It is absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. I love it now. So we mm -hmm. would like to try Brass we'll Lancashire. Lancashire. Which removes the beer and I guess is a bit tighter. I will say Brass Birmingham isn't the tightest two player game. It very much, in my opinion, becomes you're kind of off doing your own thing because the map's large enough. Yeah. Two player does negate some of the location cards that are in the game, but you can still get to those locations mm -hmm. with wild cards. Lancashire is apparently a tighter two-player experience, so yeah. I would like to try to. And we're probably going to get Lancashire at some point yeah. because we really, really love uh, Birmingham. And I would like to replay that game again with Jason because that's who we played it with the first time yeah. now that we know it better. Yep. Next up are some more review games, and we're going to do this as a threefer. Sent to us from Zatu, which is an online board game retailer in the UK. So if you're unable to buy games at your friendly local gaming store, maybe they don't have them. Maybe you don't have a friendly local gaming store. You could buy games online. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? And Zatu located in the UK, but they do ship worldwide. Very good prices. Great too. prices yep. and a lot of selection. We yes. have found some games in there that we have not been able to find anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested, we do have a link in our description below. It is an affiliate link, which means we get a very small little tiny percentage of any sales that are made through our affiliate link. Yes. So might be a good way if you're already buying a game to support us. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the UK and you're already buying games for Zatu, yeah. why not? Zatu sent us this little trio of games to review. So thank you to Zatu for doing that. We have Walkie Talkie, Veggies, and Ouch. And these are all from Devere Games. And they are all very different games. Mm -hmm. We've played all three of these, but we've definitely played Veggies the most. Veggies is very good. So maybe we'll talk about Veggies first. So uh, Veggies, these are all just simple card games. There's nothing else in the box. It's just cards. Play in under 15 minutes. Yeah. Veggies is a kind of like set collection type of game where you are building out a market stand of vegetables. On the cards that you're building out, there is going to be images of different fruits and vegetables. There's also going to be some empty crates and there's going to be some crates that have little mice in them. Mm -hmm. And you are trying to build out like groupings of certain fruits and vegetables based on what you're going to have the most of. Mm -hmm. And those are going to be the ones that everybody is going to score. Yep. Mice are negative two at the end. Empty crates are worth nothing. And you basically laid the cards out by, you can overlap them. You could put them orthogonal next to each other. And it's just like a little puzzly card game. Like Jeff said, you could play this in like 15, under 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And we've only played it at two. I think it works really well at two. I think it works incredible at two. Yeah. Very accessible, easy to learn, quick to mm -hmm. table. I like love this game. It's going to be traveling with us wherever we go. It's very interesting how you score. So let's just say, for example, I had carrots and strawberries that were my biggest. I would score my biggest group of carrots time how many groups of carrots I have. Yeah. But the really cool thing is I'm also scoring off of Jamie's most. So if Jamie has picked mushrooms, mm -hmm. I would also score that. So if Jamie's picked mushrooms to score off of, it's one of her two biggest ones. I'm also going to score mushrooms and maybe I have none on my board. So you have to pay attention to what you're building and what they're building so that you can optimize how much you score based off of both markets. It's yeah. really good. Really, really enjoy it. And an error that we, I think we both kind of made in the first game that we played is like, we were like, oh, I'm building up this huge thing of bananas. Mm -hmm. But what you want is to have like a good size group and then a bunch of little groups yeah. of that same thing so that you can get that multiply factor. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it's a lot thinkier than yeah. I thought it would be and I love it. Next up, we'll talk about Walkie Talkie, which was our least favorite of the bunch, I would say. Not my type of game. Yeah, so Walkie Talkie is a party style game where you have cards, one side there's a letter, the other side there's a color. 
you flip them so as you shuffle them half the cards have letters and half have colors. Everybody has a hand of cards mixed of letters and colors and then in the center of the table there is one letter and one color. This is kind of like a word associ association game where everybody's playing all at once. It's a co-op mm -hmm. game. So let's just say there was the letter B and there was the color. Green. Somebody would have to lay down a card on either top of the letters or on top of the colors in order to make an association. If it's B and green and somebody puts down a P, let's just say, you could yell out P yeah. <laughs> or you could yell out pineapple and you have to be able to convince everybody why you're making that association. So if I said pineapple with green, I could be like, well, pineapples have green leaves. Yeah. And everybody has to be in agreement about that. Mm -hmm. And you keep going, you're on a timer for a two player game, you get a minute, it's 30 seconds per mm -hmm. player. And that's the game. It goes by very, very fast. You're playing this in under five minutes because there is a timer. It's not great at two. No. I would say you would definitely want it's to play two to this. Eight. It's two so to eight. I would say higher would be better. Yeah, but for the fun factor. Yeah, definitely would be a really good game to play with people who don't typically play games. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to learn. It's just a little bit chaotic. It's mm -hmm. a party game. It's not necessarily our style of party game. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a little bit too. I think Jamie would enjoy it more than I would mm -hmm. at a higher player count. It's not one that I'm ever going to gravitate towards. No. It's got a real time element to it as well, which yeah. always becomes a bit chaotic. Yep. So that's walkie talkie. And then the last one in the bunch is called Ouch. Or I've never ouch. played anything like this. Me either. So once again, another card game where you have a stack of cards. One side has a cactus on it and then the other side has different parts of the cactus or maybe some animals or maybe some flowers. You are laying the cards face down, so the cactus side up, and there's a grid of six, and whoever's turn it is, they have to tell you which side of the card they're gonna pick up, top, bottom, left, or right. Mm -hmm. Then you have to pick up the card from that side. So let's say I said top, I have to pick it up from the top and pull it up. If it shows on the bottom a piece of the cactus on it, where I've picked it up, I have to say, ouch, and she then it's pricked. out of the game. I got pricked. You know, it happens. But if you pick it up and there's no cactus, you get to add that to your little collection. We're trying to essentially collect flowers because flowers are worth points and some of the cards have either snakes or foxes on them which allow you to do special actions. That's the game, the first person to have eight cards wins. So the cactus on the other side is along the edges. Yes. You kept saying cactus. Oh, yeah. But it's like on the edges. So some cards might have three edges that don't have cactuses on it. So you're not going to get an ouch, but it's worth less yeah. points, essentially. Yeah. The harder ones to grab have three sides with cactuses on it. So you really only have one in four chance of grabbing that card without getting an ouch kind of deal. It's kind of like a push your luck type of game. Yeah, that's and how I was there's say some game. of the cards that allow you to like take a turn again right mm -hmm. away, but if you do you and you get both. pricked, yeah. you might lose both of your cards. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit push your luck. It's just silly. This game is just like mm -hmm. a silly little fun game. You could easily play it with kids. You could play this with anyone, travel with it. Yeah, I think I a, liked it a lot. So, But I think I enjoyed veggies the most. Yep. Yeah. Out second, walkie talkie third. Dominoes. Last but not least, we have our final game that was voted on by Patreon, and that is Paint the Roses. And yes, this is the deluxe edition, and that's why the freaking box doesn't close. Yep. It's an annoyance in our life. Paint the Roses is a cooperative deduction game where you are going around the Queen's Garden from Alice in Wonderland, and you are painting the roses. Obviously, mm -hmm. the Queen is chasing you because she wants to cut off your head because you know. She's that's just what, a little... That's what she do. That's just what she does. It's just in her nature. You are your nature. You are your nature. You are going around and you have a grid in the middle with acrylic tiles that have flowers on them. You are going to be drawing cards, easy, medium, and hard, that are showing you either two colors, if it's easy, two shapes or two colors if it's medium or it could be a mix of both if it's hard. Mm. And you are trying to create those patterns on the grid and then giving each other clues so that the other person has to guess what's on your card. Mm -hmm. Now, if you give a clue and your group gets it right, that's great. You move ahead and the queen slowly chases you. But if you get it wrong, the queen is doubling her speed and she's chasing you faster. If the queen ever catches up to you... You did. You did. If you fill out the entire grid before the queen ever catches you, you win. Mm -hmm. Which is something we've never done. No, we haven't. So, haven't we? 
Maybe our first game. I think our first we lost in the second basic. Mm. I think maybe one once. So within the deluxe edition, it comes with a bunch of expansions, which is really cool because each expansion is designed by a different designer. Mm -hmm. So Daryl Andrews, as an example, has one in here. So we've played the base game a few times and then we played with the Alice expansion. So with the Alice expansion, she has eat me, drink me tokens, which allow you to do different things. We got destroyed. <laughs> we played it like three times and we didn't even get like a quarter of the way through. It is not an easy game. It was not, it's not an easy game. Now, We've only ever played it at two players. Mm -hmm. I do feel like this would probably be best with more. Agreed. For sure. And, and that's only because like in a two player game, you kind of have a bit of a dummy character where you can throw away a cube and you don't, the queen doesn't like double up her run to chase mm -hmm. you. You only get three of those. And if like Jeff's taken a hard card and I can't guess what it is, like we very easily could die. And you're quickly. you're kind of limited too by what, so you're grabbing tiles from like a communal market yeah. to put out. You could have a card that doesn't match any of the tokens that you have to put out on the board. You're basically placing something and hoping it exists elsewhere in order to give them a clue, but you might not be able to give them a clue. It's very difficult. Yeah. And, very puzzling. And sometimes you have to give a clue and then everybody is like, that could be literally yeah. anything. And you're like, it's my only freaking like option. Like if you put down one clue, it's like one cube to mark that there's one combination. I mean, it could be so many different things. Yes, it could. With that being said, I really enjoy this game. I don't think we've played anything like it. I find mm. it's a really unique take on it's a social deduction also game. It's insanely beautiful. beautiful. It's so, the so pretty. It's crazy. Obviously, we do have the deluxe version, which helps, I'm mm -hmm. sure. I'm really excited to play all of the expansions. I would like to at least try and beat the Alice one before we move on to another <laughs> one. That is Paint the Roses. Definitely recommend you check it out if you get a chance. The theme, the art, the gameplay. It's just, it's a super fun game. Cool. So those are the games that we have for you today in our board game snapshot. Let us know. Yeah! You scared me. Let us know down below if you have played any of these games and what you think of them. We would love to know, wouldn't we, Jeffrey? We would. That is all that we have for you today. So if you're interested in buying board games like any of the many that we talked about today, you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. And for us here in Halifax, that's not where we are, but for us, that is... Boardroom Game Cafe. That's right. That's all we have. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see... Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later days. <laughs> Third. Fourth. Didn't do that on purpose. Okay. Perfect. It's a known thing. Yes, but, agreed. Um, maybe don't expect to win unless you have like superhuman it's powers a bit, in your group. It's a Brit, uh, Brit. Here in Halifax. Nope, that's I not even where we live that. anymore.